Hello all and welcome to Music Minute, the hot theory guide to learn those extra concepts the right way. Today we're going to be taking a little break from the theory and we're going to be talking about a composer. Quiz question, do you know this little ditty of music? If you didn't guess Tchaikovsky, you can watch the rest of the video and learn a lot more about him. If you did guess Tchaikovsky, congratulations, you're right. Now you can stay tuned and watch the rest of the video to learn more about him. Now the reason we're talking about Tchaikovsky is because he was in the middle of the Romantic period. You know, the heart of the Romantic period. Romantic? Heart? February? You get it, right? In Russian, his name is something like Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, but in American, we kind of just say Peter Tchaikovsky. In any case, he was born on May 7th, 1840. Here's the basic rundown of how he went from child to independent composer. Tchaikovsky was born to parents of long military service lines, but both were also artistically trained, including in music. He had six siblings four brothers, a half-sister, and a full sister named Alexandra. As he grew up, he became very close to that sister, Alexandra. When Alexandra married and had seven children, this was his only sense of family life as an adult. When he was just four and a half, his family hired a 22-year-old French governess to teach the children. At the age of five, he started piano lessons. By the age of six, he was fluent in German and French. Tchaikovsky became quite attached to his teacher, the governess, and she became kind of a second mother to him. Even though both of his parents were supportive in his musical studies, they sent him at the age of 10 to the Imperial School of Jurisprudence. This was probably a practical decision because opportunities for being a professional musician at the time were limited. Thus, he studied to be a civil servant. While he was away at boarding school for the first two years, he suffered emotional trauma for being distanced from his mother. In 1854, when he was about 14, she passed away due to cholera, and this traumatized him for the rest of his life. It was from this event that he drew his inspiration for his first composition, a waltz in her memory. His father sent him back to boarding school in hopes that his studies would distract him from the loss of his mother. And so Tchaikovsky established new friendships and went to the opera with his friends. Through the opera, Tchaikovsky discovered his fondness for composers like Mozart, Bellini, Rossini, and Verdi. He would then improvise for his friends back at school in the choir room based on the melodies that they were singing in class. His friends later commented that they were entertained, but they didn't see any glorious future for his musical ability. Even so, Tchaikovsky wanted to pursue music. And so when Tchaikovsky was 15, his father employed Rudolf Kuttinger to give him more piano lessons. When the father inquired about his talent, Kuttinger said that he was a good student, but his ability wasn't anything remarkable. His father was still supportive, but then encouraged him to finish his schooling and apply for a post in the Ministry of Justice. Again, this was practical advice because there weren't many opportunities for musicians in Russia. There wasn't even a program in the educational system for professional musicians, let alone for composers. At the age of 19, Tchaikovsky graduated. He was appointed five days later to the Ministry of Justice. Six months later, and he was junior assistant. Two months later, and he was a senior assistant. He then remained as a senior assistant for the rest of his three-year service career. At the age of 21, he began theory lessons in St. Petersburg, and then enrolled into the premier class of the St. Petersburg Conservatory. He still held on to his ministry post until the following year, just in case the music thing didn't quite work out. He studied harmony and counterpoint under Zaremba, and instrumentation and composition under Rubinstein, the founding member of the conservatory. Thus, the conservatory transformed him into a professional musician, giving him the tools he needed to thrive. It also gave him perspective, as most of the teachers were from other European countries, and so he learned the westernized version of music making. He developed a sense of understanding that his works were not just from Russia, not just from Europe, but of the world. Tchaikovsky's teacher Rubinstein was impressed with his musical ability, and even cited him as a genius of composition, but he was less fond of his student work. His opinion never changed, even though Tchaikovsky's reputation grew in the years to come. Even when it came to submitting his first symphony, Rubinstein and Zaremba both said it had to be made over. Even with the changes he made, they wouldn't perform it. Tchaikovsky was dismayed and withdrew the symphony altogether. The original draft, before the makeover, was later performed in Moscow in February of 1868. 
During his time in the conservatory, there was drama among the faculty. There existed a group of five musicians that were not professionally trained that were called the Mighty Handful, or just the Five. The Five wanted to standardize the sound of Russian music and believed that composers, if trained in the way of Western music writing, would lack the ability to show Russian culture in their music. Tchaikovsky's teacher Rubinstein was not convinced by the Five and criticized their efforts. Rubinstein believed that creativity without discipline resulted in wasted talent. When Rubinstein created the conservatory and hired these foreign teachers to bring in the Western practices, he was seen as a target for the five. Tchaikovsky and his peers were well aware of this argument, but were told to keep silent and focused on their studies. Tchaikovsky, being a student of Rubinstein, became a target anyway. In fact, one of the five, Caesar Cui, wrote a vicious review on a cantata that Tchaikovsky had presented for his graduation thesis. The review devastated Tchaikovsky. After graduating from the conservatory, Tchaikovsky considered going back to work for public service for income. But Rubinstein's brother, Nikolai, offered him a position in the Moscow Conservatory of Music. Though his salary was only going to be about 50 rubles a month, which I calculated to be about $500 today, Tchaikovsky was really happy to get this and eagerly accepted. And then the first public performance of his work happened in Pavlovsk Park on September 11th, 1965. From 1867 to 1878, Tchaikovsky flourished as a professor of music and even became a music critic. He praised Beethoven, he thought Brahms was a little overrated, and he thought Schumann kind of needed work in the art of orchestration. He attended the first complete production of Wagner's Der Ring des Nibelungen, or The Ring Cycle, in Beirut, Germany. He admired the stage performance, but hardly the music, calling the score of Das Rheingold unlikely nonsense, through which, from time to time, sparkle unusually beautiful and astonishing details. In 1867, Rubinstein resigned as conductor of the St. Petersburg Conservatory, and was replaced by a member of the Five. This guy's name was Mila Balakriev. Tchaikovsky had already promised to send over a set of pieces to the conservatory, but kind of changed his mind when the new conductor came in. After all, the ensemble was now performing music under the guidance of someone that didn't care for his music. He ended up sending the pieces anyway, with a note attached saying, please don't perform these. But even so, Balakriev responded saying, we think you're a pretty good composer and we like your works. In 1869, Balakriev and Tchaikovsky worked together to produce Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet was a fantasy overture that became Tchaikovsky's first recognized masterpiece. Even the Five recognized it as good music. The Five also accepted his second symphony called The Little Russian. This was because the primary characteristics of the piece echoed Russian folk songs rather than Western practices. Even though Tchaikovsky and the Five differed when it came to their thoughts in writing music, they remained on generally friendly terms. However, Tchaikovsky sought his own independence away from the Five and from the Conservatory of St. Petersburg. This is how Tchaikovsky got his start as an independent composer. My question to you is how did your start happen, or how is your start going? Thanks for watching this week's episode of Music Minute. If you have any comments or questions, or you have an idea for a future episode, or if you can tell me the name of this little ditty, you can let me know on Facebook, the comments below, or directly email me at my website, stephenjacks.com. And don't forget to subscribe for more Music Minutes. Can you imagine Tchaikovsky walking up to someone and saying, I'm trying to make a piece called the 1812 Overture. Do you know where I can get a cannon?